Good afternoon. Welcome to Tuesday's Craft and Chat. Today is Tuesday the 19th of January. I'm Amanda Fowler. This is the Inspiring Lincoln Facebook page. Welcome, welcome, welcome. If you are here, could you send me a message? Uh, let me know who you are and where you're from and uh, we will get started. I'm live in the right place, which is fantastic. <laughs> if you've if you've popped by on one of my lives before, you'll know that I always like to check just in case I'm in the wrong spot. So let's have a look. So Sue's here, Michelle's here, Anita's here, Susan's here, Julia Crook's here, Marlene's here. Thank you. Thank you so much. So how are we doing today? How has your week been? What has been happening in your world? Um, and who's got some joy to share with us today? Who's got something smiley to share with us today? Something fun or interesting or it made you smile? That's what I want to hear all about today. It could be I don't know, you've read a new book, you've um, mastered a fancy card fold, you've got a lie in till seven o'clock this morning, it doesn't matter what it is, if it's made you smile, oh we want to hear it, so put it in the comments. Um, so Sally's here, Faye's here, Maureen's here, Anne's here, Jen's here, Pam and Margaret and Judith. We've got a busy house today so grab yourselves a cuppa and like I said in the comments I want to hear something that's going to make me smile. I have come prepared with a pot of peppermint tea today. Um, I am hoping that my internet and everything is going to behave. Huge apologies for last week. I had no idea what was going on. The replays all jumbled and all sorts of things. So, at the slightest hint of any trouble, <laughs> can you put a comment um, in the box, uh, in the comment box? Quite often, um the problems that you might have and the problem that i had last week was i couldn't see your comments so um what it can be is that you need to refresh the page which is or what i'm actually going to do now <laughs> i'm going to refresh the page and see because Very interestingly, there were lots of comments and I didn't see them. So, Belinda's here and saying hello as is Jen, as is Lynn. Lynn's uh, using up DSP. Uh, for those of you that don't know, that's designer series paper or patterned paper. Oh, Michelle sorted out the neighbour's Netflix. That's a really cool job, well done. Ros is saying good afternoon, Anne is, as is Karen and Margaret and Maureen, Angela's with Chris as well and Amanda and Tanya and Gordy have also arrived. Fantastic, fantastic. So if you've just arrived, what I am asking for in the comments today is something that's made you smile this week can be big, it can be small, it can be anything. We need some more joy in our lives. So, um, as you know, that is kind of my word for the year. I'm all about finding some joy. And the, <laughs> some of the joy I've had this week was watching my darling husband, Brian, trying to hand feed the two Robins that live in the hedge next to our, our house. It was very funny. So up until this weekend we've only ever seen one robin and obviously male and female robins look the same 
and we just assumed there was only one because we'd only ever seen one at once but we saw two at the weekend and Brian was out putting bird food on the on the bird table and Robins love mealworms and so it's so um he was putting loads of those out and they were both on the wall and he stood there with his hands out <laughs> willing the Robins to come and you know sit on his hands they weren't having any of it but it was very funny to watch he was hopeful he was hopeful um but they just sat on the wall and tweeted at him to tell him to go away so they could go and eat the mealworms because he was in their direct flight path to get to them so that was giving me joy today the other thing was and i can't remember whether i actually mentioned this last week or the week before um was the rspb big garden bird watch so every year the rspb do a, a survey of every of, of gardens and get people to um get people to count the birds in their garden over a one hour period and it's in a couple of weeks and you can go onto the RSPB website and you can either download the information or via email, which obviously saves them a bit of money because you don't have to do all the printing. Um, or you can apply for a pack and the pack comes in the post. And I needed a pack because I'm pretty rubbish at working out which bird is which. And it, it comes with this and it says, what, what will you see? And it's got all of the pictures so even somebody like me who can't you know tell the difference between a blue tit and a great tit or yeah anyway so it's got pictures it's very cool it is very cool and yet again I think I'm I'm missing yeah you see right guys honestly i have no clue what's going on with this because i am just not seeing your messages right okay so amanda is tidying up the garden belinda's little old dog makes her smile Oh, Sarah's got lots of snow again. So over in France, there's lots of snow and she's made chocolate brownies. That is awesome. Oh, Sally is saying a buzzard has been visiting her garden daily and sitting in the oak tree. Oh, might be eyeing up the visitors to the bird table. That's not so good. Soraya, hello. Julie has been playing games with two grandchildren on FaceTime. We laughed a lot. It was great and it cheered you up. That's, isn't technology wonderful? Oh, the Robin, a Robin joined Amanda at the patio table at the weekend. And Ros has been watching a tiny wren making a nest in the hedge. And Karen's got her RSPB pack too. Right, so what I am going to do is I'm going to see if I can um, right okay I found another way to look at the comments so I'm so these are the ones I've missed so Margaret has mastered half double crochet awesome margaret have you seen my crochet videos because we made a scarf in november it was very cool and half treble crochet is one of my favorite stitches ah ross says that she does the bird watch every year oh judith can't join us because her boy oh no just had the boiler replaced and need to disinfect areas in all the rooms around the radiators. That's very important. Stay safe, everybody. Wash your hands. Um, 
<laughs> Faye's, Faye says that she's lurking and working. Maureen says she has two Robins as well. Tanya made a chocolate cake. Mm -mm -mm. Yummy. Afternoon to my mummy. Or Pauline to the rest of you. <laughs> um, Donna is in the house from Australia. Loads, Donna. And Trish is here and Anne's here. And Jan's here. Let's see. Da, 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 da. And mum saying afternoon again. Okay, so let's go. Right. And Llewellyn is here from Alabama. Hello, Llewellyn. Sue says she's purchased a bird feeder this year, which has been entertaining her. Too many pigeons, but we've got two robins, a variety of the tit family and sparrows and starlings. Yeah, we have pigeons too. But I, <laughs> we work on the principle that the way we've got the bird table set up is there's mesh on the side so only the little birds can get in to the good stuff and then when they've had what they want we take the mesh off and then let the pigeons go in and tidy up and then we put some more out so the pigeons in our world do have a little bit of use so so that is good right so let's let's see Okay, right. So it looks like the messages are coming through now. Hooray, hooray, hooray. So that's really good. So I am pleased that you are finding joy in your world. Um, we're halfway through January, so that's got to be a good thing as well. Um, I'll have a few kind of, of updates with uh, stamping up and shipping. Um, yeah. Stuff's still not moving and um, I've been on the phone to UPS today trying to work out what's happening and it seems like potentially there's problems with paperwork, there's sheer volume of, of parcels. Um, UPS are pretty much the only shipping company bringing stuff from Europe into the UK at the moment. A lot of the other major companies aren't shipping into the UK until they get all their systems online and everything else. So there is a huge backlog and also obviously you've got all the COVID related issues from, you know, staffing and people having to self-isolate and people being poorly and all of that. So I know many of you have been waiting for an update today about Craft Along next week. It's not going to take place next week. And for those of my awesome team members that are here that are also waiting for team training next week as well, that's not going to happen next week either. Um, but as soon, as soon as I know that my parcels are on UK soil and on their way to me, I will be doing a happy dance and I will share that happy dance with you. Well, not, not actually, because you don't need to see me dancing. <laughs> but I just want to give a shout out to all the messages that I got from you guys last week. So <laughs> I sent out a message which basically said, I can't, I can't do the craft along next week because the stuff's not here and it's, you know, not very clever. And more than one person said I probably needed to have a gin instead. <laughs> Which kind of makes me understand. You guys know me. <laughs> Maybe I should have had a gin. Um, but yeah, I, I cannot stress enough how much your awesome messages mean to me and how lovely you all are. And I know I have the best customers and the best team, I know that, but you send me wonderful messages and it really makes my heart glad. So those messages and Brian trying to feed the Robins was definitely my joyful part of this week. <laughs> 
So let's let's have a look. Katie's here. She's been busy doing things for the brownies. Oh, Janet, that's wonderful news. I'm thrilled you've had the vaccine. Hooray, hooray. That's good. Oh, Jan has a bird table and feeder and she has pigeons, squirrels, two robins, blue tits and others. You see, it's amazing, isn't it? <laughs> Sarah says we've been ordering too many goodies. Yes, we have. Kerry's here. Oh, wonderful. So Susan's saying her daughter's had her second vaccine jab as she's a frontline worker in ICU. That's amazing. And a huge thank you to all of the frontline workers across the board. And I, I say this often, the NHS workers and the supermarket workers and the delivery drivers and the the armed forces that are helping and the volunteers that are doing the vaccines and the doctors and the nurses and the everybody. You are awesome. Scylla's here. <laughs> Donna's got a catalogue and she's checking everything out. Uh, Gordy's on a wait list for the vaccine. Jackie's here. <laughs> Aww. Belinda's saying the thing that I I do so much for you guys so we can happily wait. <gasps> um, <coughs> hang on. Um, Karen says she has both species of woodpeckers on her feeders. That's amazing. Occasionally we hear a woodpecker. So where we live, um, just, just to the south of us, that sounds so posh, doesn't it? But like a few streets away, not many streets, a couple of streets away, there's um, some woods and some farmer's fields and um, like a wooded copse and proper hedgerows and that kind of stuff. So we sometimes hear a woodpecker, um, but we haven't had one in the garden. That's good. That's good. Lisa's saying that she's got a text saying UPS is bringing her order tomorrow. Yeah, fingers crossed, Lisa. Um, that's something actually that I do need to say. Some of the texts and the emails are automated from UPS. So what sometimes happens is a parcel gets to a certain point in the um, shipping order and it auto generates an email or a text and then it gets stuck so it then doesn't auto generate another one until it's moving again so i hope lisa have you got the my ups app um check on there that's usually the most up to date kind of information but I do think that across the board, the system is so under strain that it's all going crazy. And Karen says she's got big trees in her garden. Um, Marlene said so did I, but then she got the same one last week as well. Okay, so Lisa and Marlene, I will go and have a rummage <laughs> in uh, tracking numbers and uh, the deliveries and see and I'll send you a quick email when I'm when I'm done here <gasps> 29 squirrels in Fairham Woods on Sunday oh Lisa thank you I, I just want you to get your goodies yeah love the squirrels okay so if you saw my blog post yesterday I was using products from the sea and sand, sand and sea, sand and sea products like this one, which is really, really cool. And I know lots of you, when I did the uh, launch a couple of weeks ago, lots of you were saying you wanted to see those products. So what I thought I would do today is show you all of the products, show you a few hints and tips, um 
and um, about using it, things that I've kind of worked out. And uh, then we can, yeah, you can, you can see, but it's always better to see all the papers and, and that kind of stuff. And it's so cool. It is so cool. And I might have my gold gilding flakes out again. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is turn the camera around. Um, let me know if you have any problems with the sound or the picture. And um, we will, I will try and fix it. Okay, so I'm going to cover you over and flip you upside down. Or flip me upside down. I'm not sure which one that is. Let's move that out of the way. Let's see. I always have to try and move my tea. Doesn't it look lovely? My tea out of the way because I'm I'm terrified of throwing it on the floor. Right, so let's start out with the paper. Now, this is really cool because I haven't even opened the paper yet. So actually, I don't know how cool these papers are. I know they will be, but I don't know. Actually, oh yeah, I'll do it that way. Okay, so um, the papers are 12 by 12. And so we've got... So that's one pattern. Ooh, that's nice. So that's like a sandy, sandy shore or a beach. That's one. See, I love this type of effect. So, ooh. Trying to pick up one sheet at a time. So are these anemones, honestly, like birds. I don't, yeah. I'm never quite sure what these are. Are these anemones? I don't know. That's cool as well. Those are starfish. I like that one too. I think these are sand dollars. There's probably another name. Oh, I like this too. Sea urchins. Ah, sea urchins. Yeah. So, okay. So that's, uh, you see, I told you I didn't know. That's sea urchins. Yeah, they're the ones that impaled Kimberly's foot when she was on holiday in Croatia last year. Um, oh, that's so pretty. <gasps> it's blue. We like blue. <laughs> and dots. Oh, very cool. <laughs> Anne's wanting to know how, co how come, how come, I didn't rip off the paper and stroke them the second that I got them. Been busy, Anne. Been busy. <laughs> uh, sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. But quite often what I do is I wait until I'm going to work with it because then I get to see it for the first time and I get really excited. So there we go. So these are the pearls. What are they called? They're called opal rounds, but I'm calling them pearls. And they are like opals. If you've ever seen a clear opal with the flashes of green and purple in them. Very lovely. There is also this. And this is pearlescent paper. And so it's, it's paper weight. It's thick paper not um, cardstock and you get two sheets in it and where's the card that I made so this is the this is the card that I made that was on my blog yesterday 
and I don't know whether how how well it's going to pick it up and show you. Um, I'm hoping that you can see it, but it's it is just so pretty, and it takes ink quite well. Um, but be aware that it it's slippy. Okay, so when you stamp something, stamp it and leave it to dry for a little bit before you do anything with it. Okay, so so that's that. So that's those. And then we have this is the point at which I freak out because I go, where's all the stuff that I have? Right, it's okay. It's here. <laughs> just, just rummaging in a box. Right, okay. So let's just show you these first. These are seaside shells and these are stickers. These are cardstock stickers or paper. No, they're not cardstock, they're paper. There you go. They are paper stickers and they are the same. Am I in shot? They are the same pearlescent as that paper I've just shown you. So we do sometimes have cardstock stickers. These are thinner. So you've got these lovely blue shells here, got some pink shells and some starfish. Okay, so that's those. And then, um, Roz is asking me, did I use the die in the embossing folder on this card? Yes, I did, Roz, and I'm going to show you. That's one of the hints and tips I'm going to show you with this. So let's just look at the stamps first. So it's a double stamp set. So there's two sheets. And I kind of want to... What I actually want to do is I'm just going to put that there because these ones here these stamps here are really detailed stamps and they're realistic and they've got the splodgy bits that's the technical term to infill and I'll show you kind of how how that works on some of the some of the stamps but equally you can use it as um, texture and so on to, to add things and this one kind of fits with those and then these ones here are perhaps more stylized I think really um, cleaner there's not as much detail on them and you've got all of your sentiments and some bubbly bits too and then to go with that you have these dies so that die is, uh, let me just check that you're, that's all in shot. That die is for that one. That die is for that bit of sand, uh, that bit of um, seagrass. That's for that bit of seagrass. That's for that one. And that I think is that one. Okay, so they're the individual dies, and then you've got the monster die. So this die is how I cut out this. Okay, so I'm going to show you, you can do this in several ways. So you can die cut and stamp, you can emboss, you could, yeah, all sorts of different ways of using it. So this die cuts out this, but then... This die works with this embossing folder. So if I put a piece of paper in there, you might be able to, I don't know. Can you actually see that better? 
I don't know does it does it show better with the paper in it I don't know that it does actually um but if I if I pop this over the top this actually matches these uh shell images the five shell images and there's also um a bit of texture with the embossing folder so this leaf here leaves weed whatever it is has got a bit of um a bit of yeah embossing onto the die cut so i'm going to show you show you how that works now i've actually i've bought my big boss in i haven't actually used my big boss whilst we've been demonstrating because normally i don't because um it takes too much time but i thought i had better do that today so i'm just going to i have to bear with me because i've got big sheets of card that i need to cut down First up, I'm going to emboss this to show you. So this is Sahara Sand. It's a 3D embossing folder, so it's thick. So you need the base plate, the embossing folder, and your grey plate. And you're just going to wind it through. Da -da -da. So look at that. How cool is that? So you've got all this texture here on the shells and on the weed and you've got all the dots. And so, you know, some of the weed is more prominent and some of it is softer. It's just genius. Okay. Now, if you want to die cut as well as um, as well as um, emboss what you need to do is you need to die cut first because if you do it the, if you do it the other way what will happen is you'll squash all your embossing okay so you get your die and you get your base plate and your thin dies adapter and that one and that one's going on there like that and then we've got a plate on the top and we'll just wind it through da -da -da. Seriously, I love my big boss because look, it just all falls out. Right, um, so let me just get these extra little bits out. Get them off here. Now, pop the last few bits out. Now, this is one of the tips that I want to share with you about using the embossing folder with the die. So, with this one, so if you look at it, you can see quite clearly the, where the shells are going to go. But you might think that you might be a little bit off, okay? So let me just move that out of the way. So what I do, I've put that underneath, you can see better. What I do is I place my die cut on top of, of this bit, which is so that's the that's the raised bit, the bumpy bit. And I place my die cut over the top 
and line everything up. Yeah, so you can pin it down if you want to with a little bit of washi tape, but just spend a minute or two, a few seconds really, just lining it up and then I just hold it down like that and I've, I've got it then and you can actually look over the top and just double check that you're all aligned pop it in like that whiz it through and look at so cool. So we're going to use this on a card in a few minutes. Um, but you can see how beautiful that is. Now, not only can you use it whole, but you can just snip these shells out and the weed. So, um, you know, you just because it's it's a whole unit, don't think that you have to use it as a whole thing. Um, you can use them individually. Okay, so I'm going to die cut again. Find a, where's, oh, 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 oh. Need some more cardstock. Um, <laughs> Tracy said she wasn't sure about the coordination between the die and the embossing folder. She now loves loves the set. Okay, right. Looks like I had a moment there where. Ooh. Okay, I'm a back. Okay. So my Wi-Fi, okay. So there was an error message on my phone screen about the Wi-Fi. So I don't know what, ooh, what has happened there. So, hmm. okay, so you can hear me now, yes? Good. So <laughs> what you missed was not a lot. Um, I've just die cut this and the cardstock is a bit too small, okay? So you're not gonna get the full image, but that isn't what I want to show you. Okay, I want to show you the stamping, so it doesn't matter. Okay, so let's get Ooh, let's get this out. Okay, so I've um, I've cut this and the piece of cardstock is three and three quarters by five and a half. That's why it's slightly too small. Um, if I show you with the die cut piece, it is about five and three quarters. Five and three quarters by a little over four. So, stamping. That's what we want to show you. So, for instance, this 
stamp is going to go on there like so. I'm just going to put that there and I'm just going to get some of my colours. Um, and I'm going to go with Sahara Sand. Let's get the stamp. So I'm going to ink it up and I'm going to stamp it off and I've found that um, for me I didn't, I personally didn't like a stronger colour but you know you, you play with it how you want but look at the detail on that, so cool. Yeah I'm using very vanilla Sarah. So you then have to line it up now just take a minute because what you're trying to do is kind of line it up in multiple places doesn't help when you've got a bit of scrap card there look but look how cool that is so let me just do the others. I'm just going to use different colours actually. So you can see. So I've got some seaside spray. I've stamped it off. Look how pretty that is. Okay, so Katie's saying my um, sound and words aren't aligned. So there's a way we can test that. I've just put the flirty flamingo in my hand. Was that lined up or not lined up? I'm slightly concerned. So this is what happened last week. Let me know. Am I back lined up? Yeah, hooray, Ray. Okay, right. So, um, Flirty Flamingo and there we go. So that's going on there and then we've got two more little shells to add in. I want to do a Sahara Sand one there and another thank you everyone and this one here so these ones are like full strength okay so what you can do with these now is cut them but I want to show you that you can then also emboss it when you've stamped it so hang on let me cover this over I don't want to put my fingers in the ink pads. But come on. So then if you get the embossing folder and again line it up as we did before and just there we go spend a second or two to line that up Whoa. so not only have I got stuff all over my desk now 
Also got stuff all over the floor. Everywhere. Everywhere. Right. Da -da -da. And so now, I hope you can see that. So now, not only have you got the die cut and the embossing, but you've also got the stamping as well. It's just so cool. So cool. Right. So I am going to take this little one here and do a little bit of snipping. So I am actually going to make a card. <laughs> but have you got any questions about kind of the things I've just shared to do with this has it suddenly jumped on people's wish lists because I love this look at that it's so pretty see it can go on there like that but we're actually going to do something else with it I'm just trimming off the excess. So now obviously I've got these shells. I'm going to put on a card. So let's find some seaside spray cardstock. <laughs> so Roz is saying that she didn't think she needed it and now she does <laughs> Margaret says I'm being tempting <laughs> oh no you see, you don't know what you don't what you need until you see all the stuff. So let's just get that on there. And then I need some paper. And I don't know which paper I need. So Ooh. Just bear with me while I while I go through all the colours and then probably pick blue. Um no actually I don't think I will. I think it'll be that one or that one. Let's have a look. Oh, do we want, that's what we want. Okay. Right, for those of you that only like to stroke your patterned paper, look away now. Because <laughs> I'm going to chop this. Uh, let's see. Uh, did, did, did. And three quarters. Oh. Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Debbie and Llewellyn, thank you for sharing. Um, if you are new to me, hello, hello, hello. Thank you so much for popping in. Um, Please do share this video, this live. Um, it means that your friends will get to see what you're watching. Um, but it's it's just such a lovely thing because it means I get to see new crafters and, and hear new crafters and chat to new crafters. So let's have a look. 
Debbie's just asked to add it to her wish list, as has Jan. Amanda's saying it's on her in her starter kit. So there we go. Right, okay. So no, we needed that. And we needed this. Which way round? We were going that way around, I think. And we need sentiment and my happy birthday sentiment is here. Will you be shocked to know it's because I didn't take it downstairs from last week? <laughs> oh dear. What a day. It's been, it's been a week. That's what it's been. It has been a week. A week of crazy. Right, so let's have a happy birthday. Tuck that in and let's get some things stuck down. Glue. Um, actually, bear with me. I need an extra layer. Crafting on the fly today. I knew what I wanted to use, but I wasn't entirely sure in which order I was going to put it. So, there we go. Which colour is the blue card? Said Jan. It is a colour, it's Seaside Spray. It is a purpley blue. So it's a soft blue. It's one of the uh, in colours. So let's get this down. There we go. Get some. Ooh. Some dimensionals on my shells and then we can play around with which order we're going to do put them in um, and then we're going to get the gilding flakes out on the next card so we're going to start with the happy birthday and build up from there It's, this shell is the tricky one because I want to showcase as much of it as possible. Do, 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 do. Are you all shouting at me? Go, no, put it that way, put it that way. Right, let's. I think it needs to go here. So that one needs to go underneath. Actually, I'll move it up a bit. I'm working in the bottom corner, aren't I? So you're all getting to see the way my brain works. <laughs> do you do that? Tell me you do this too. But you, you look at it and go, no, 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 I'll put it there, I'll put it there. And then you actually put it where you thought you were going to put it in the first place. That's got to move. There we go, that's better. And then that one's going down there. Right. Nearly. We're nearly there. <laughs> Apart from the fact that I've just lifted that and it's torn it. But it's okay because it's going gonna, it's gonna to be hidden. Don't fret. Don't fret because that is going to go 
in there like that. I need an extra dimension. Anne is saying all round the card and right back where she started. Yep. Right. It's not normally this difficult to make a simple card, honestly. I'm making it look way more difficult than it needs to be. Right, okay, so where are my awesome opal rounds? Let's get some of those on there because they will just lift the card. Ta-da! There we go. I got there. <laughs> I got there in the end. So there is card number one. Um, I am going to do a second card. Um, I'm going to be using this. And I'm going to use the Seaside Spray again as well. And what I am going to do is I'm going to put that on this beautiful pearlescent. I want all the shimmeriness which is kind of a word, um, on the card. So let's see. So let's just... So this card is a little bit longer. So this is six inches six inches tall and it's four and an eighth wide um, because the die cut what I don't want is the die cut hanging over the edges okay so it's it's just it will just sit beautifully there okay so this is going to be four and then a little bit. Yeah. Let's try that. Tiny bit off that one as well. There we go. Right. I'm cutting them both the same size. Which isn't what I meant to do. There we go. I've cut that too small now. <gasps> no, I haven't. It's the right size. Hooray. There we go. Right. Let's see. So we've got the lovely shimmery underneath. We've got this, which is the embossed and die cut shells. And what I'm going to do is get my silicon mat. silicon mat and a little bit of sponge and a little bit of Tombow glue and I'm going to dab it uh, yes Sarah this is the Sahara sand I'm going to dab it so there's hardly any glue on the sponge it's not kind of how can I say it's not pooling and then I am just going to put a little bit of glue here and there on the die cut piece and there will be little little tiny bits of glue all over and then we're going to get the gilding flakes out now, if you haven't seen me use the gilding flakes before, uh, be careful because they're like a porridge pot that never empties. 
you open the lid and it just kind of grows and grows and grows. I keep them, I keep my gilding flakes in a tall tin so that I can put my whole piece of cardstock in and um, get my uh, gilding flakes on there. So I'm picking it up with a, a brush. This is like a, a soft brush and actually I think what I'm going to do because I know I've put glue everywhere so I'm actually <laughs> going to try not to sneeze. <gasps> this is so cool. So cool. And it's not floating around everywhere. <laughs> right. Okay. So the thing is you will be able to go over this again if you find areas and it will only stick where you've got glue. Right, so I'm just going to pop that down there and put the lid back on just in case there's any possibility I might sneeze or breathe. And then just get the, the excess off. With your fingers, with the brush, doesn't matter. Look how cool is that. Right. And then you got like little errant bits here, look. Scoot them up, pop them back in your tin. I haven't actually tried to see if I can actually, if it will actually stick on my nails. It might. Then um, this is my top tip, this is my favourite tool. So this is a blending brush and then I'm just going to go over the top. look at that how cool is that so pretty what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to dust all this <laughs> all these extra bits of gold back into my pot okay the extra bits on there just pop them back into your pot and put your lid back on so they don't escape Right, so I've got these lovely bits here. Now what I am going to do, um, I think, is change the colour. Because <laughs> I can. So, I think... Hmm, yeah, I'm going to go with this pink. So this pink is a blushing bride. Um, and I'm going to make a slightly larger card. So what I'm going to do is make a, um, a, ooh, six by probably five, I think. Let's have a look. Yeah, I'm going to make a six by five. So this is going to be six inches tall, ten inches wide, score it at five, it's not a square card, you could do it as a square six by six card, but I do like having um, kind of um, elements down the sides, okay? So we've got this piece and I need something to edge it. So let's bring in a couple of strips. 
of Seaside Spray. Now, when you're doing matting and layering, normally what I do is I put a whole piece of cardstock underneath. Yeah, so like here, I've got a whole piece. But what you can do is what I'm actually going to do now, and that is put a, a piece behind an edge as opposed to across the full side. Hi, Carol. Lovely, lovely to see you. Um, what I'm actually going to do for this is put tape down. And then, I know it's the cardstock is a bit too long, but that's okay and then what I'm going to do is show you my tip of lining things up so I'm just putting it on grid paper and grid paper works really well but lined paper will also work so just make sure that your paper is kind of lined up so can you see actually if I move it there I'm on that darker line there and there so when I put the seaside spray piece on, I can check that I'm lined up on this side. I just need to see how wide I need to go. Okay, so I need this to go, so it's just over this line here. And I'm just going to do that just over that line, top and bottom. And then do the same on this side and you can use a ruler if you want to use a ruler I know some people like rulers um, it is up to you and then I'm going to do exactly the same on this side so I want it to be just over that line top and bottom and then you can see it's straight and even on both sides so I'm just going to trim that bit off there. Ooh. There we go. So now I've just got a little edge and then that is going to fit on there. And then this is going to go on there like that. Okay. I've got, I've got um, dimensional backings and gold leaf everywhere. And I've lost my tumbow. Oh, Gordy, you're lovely. She says I always have the best tips. I just want your card making and your paper crafting to be fun and easy and straightforward. And for me, that means that you'll enjoy it more. And that's, that's to me what it's all about. Sally's saying she uses her glass mat, which has a grid on it. That's brilliant. That's a really, really good, good idea. So now with this, I'm going to put that on there, but I'm going to put the dimensionals on the back. Um, this is quite a big piece. Do not be afraid of putting loads of dimensionals on it. As they say on the Bake Off, you don't want a soggy middle or a soggy bottom. So... <laughs> You know, use all the dimensionals. So. And then use either the edge bits or some of the little ones. The mini dimensionals, these ones. To put them on. So I often with these little ones... I use my pokey tool to pick them up 
and then just kind of see where they will fit you might even then you might have to you know cut them in half um but there are a few bits you don't you don't want to see them so you know just pop them where where you can ah um jan so this that's pearlescent it would work equally well with vanilla it's just i love the shiny i love anything that sparkles which is why i love the gold flakes even though they are messy but you know let's see couple more look there we go that's just a bit of extra gold leafing there okay and i don't mind that some of it isn't actually stuck down that's that is fine and then i've got or i had in my box of wonders this is I keep using this and I make no apologies for that <laughs> I did put a little funny comment on my blog yesterday um, I have favorite things and I use them all the time it's it's like this stamp set it's like what is Amanda gonna use today oh she's gonna use peaceful moments and the, <laughs> the thing is this stamp set is so good and it has so many awesome sentiments in it. I think everyone should have it. And actually, I like I say, I use it all the time. So I am going to use the happy birthday. But the die cut piece, this is from Pierced Blooms. This die cut piece is white. And that is, it, it's okay on there. But it's not, not perfect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the Seaside Spray Ink and I'm just going to tone it down a little bit. So it's not, I'm not, I'm not using some Seaside Spray Ink, a uh, Seaside Spray Card, I am just using a bit of the ink to tone it in okay does that make sense and I'm then gonna get a little bit of my Tombow glue and my silicon mat which I now know don't know where it has gone okay And I'm just going to put a little bit on the edges. And just I need a bit more need a bit more there. there we go oh. <laughs> all i'm doing is just rattling that in the bottom a buff and a polish and this this buffing and polishing just get the gets rid of all the excess but it also just makes it super shiny and then I'm going to use my Sahara sand ink I'm 
with my happy birthday. And then we're going to play, where do we put the car? Where do we put the sentiment? Because you don't want to hide your gold leafing. Ugh. So, I think it's probably going to have to go there, actually. So let's get some more. Some more dimensionals on that. <laughs> Tanya's saying that the gold leaf looks fun. It seriously, it is such fun. I love it. Love it, love it. It's um yeah, but it is a bit messy. Don't use it if you've got a cold or a cough or you know you might sneeze and don't use it with open windows because it will just float off everywhere so that is going to go there like so right I'm going to move everything so you can see the cards without <laughs> all the rubbish look so we've got really simple card there and just and just moving 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 stuff to the side hopefully there it's like I'm a tidy crafter and we all know that is so not true <laughs> but look at the gold you all need the gold um so just to kind of go over how I did that gold leafing I just used a little sponge with a bit of Tombow now um if you put the Tombow glue on and it's really wet the gold leafing doesn't stick to it properly but by using it with a sponge, just on little bits, it's almost dry, so it's touch dry. Um, it's tacky, and that's how it how it works. So, I hope you have enjoyed today's card and the the run through the sand and sea collection. Um, if you've got any questions, let me know. Let me know, let me know. Um, lots of lots of thank yous and and love for the cards. Thank you. Thank you. Hello Stella, nice to see you. Pleased that you like them too. Brilliant awesome so um sorry I'm just having a slurp of my tea before I love you and leave you so I will be back next week with some more cards um I'm not sure what I'm going to do next week yet um but we will have have some fun so I am always here at two o'clock on a Tuesday. This is called Craft and Chat. Um, I put the replay on my blog and also on YouTube so you can watch the replay there or you can watch the replay on Facebook. If you've been watching either on my blog or on YouTube you won't be able to see the comments um, because it's a live um, but I do try and read out as many of them as I can so it makes sense that what I'm questions I'm answering and so on um what else did I need to say oh uh Lisa and Marlene I will double check on your orders for you and I'll send you an email for everyone else um do let me know if you want to purchase anything if you need any help with ordering um, everything that I show in my videos you can order from me either on my blog which is www.inspiringinking.com um, there's like a shop now link or on YouTube and on Facebook there'll be clickable links so you can just 
kind of head over to the online store. So let me, let me look. Okay. Um, <laughs> Claire's looking forward to getting her gold leaf. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, lots of thank yous. Um, so, thank you, Lisa. Okay, no worries. Um, Sally, can you explain why I've always been taught to put the ink down onto the stamp, not the other way up as I do? Okay, Sally, I have the answer to that. So, have you been a crafter for a long time, like, like me, like 35 years me? Okay, so, ink pads, you, so let me, let me start from the beginning. You will have been taught that you take the ink pad to the stamp and you do this. Okay, and this is how you ink up a stamp. And before stamping up, that it was always the way to ink up your stamps. And the reason for that is in an ink pad, the ink settles. So it goes to the bottom. And by turning the ink pad upside down, you tap on it and it like activates the ink and the ink comes down onto the stamp. And you'll also find that I do that on big stamps just so that I can get the coverage that I want. You need to, generally, you need to do that with any ink pad that isn't a stamping up ink pad. So if you've got Versamark or Stazon or Memento or any of the other brands of ink there are out there in the world, you will work like that. Yeah, so uh, Sally's saying she's been crafting for 17 years. So yeah, stamping up ink pads are very special. The ink is stored upside down. So when you put this on your shelf, the ink is always going to be on this surface. So as I said, the ink kind of sinks down. So the ink is on that surface. So you have no need to do that because it's there already. So you can just pop your ink on and, and it works fine. So you might have been told to store ink pads upside down. That's kind of another thing, um, Sally, that people are, are told. And I store my stays on upside down, for instance. Um, and my memento, I store that upside down as well. But you don't store stamping up ink pads upside down because their design is so that they always have the ink on the surface ready to go. Does that make sense? Um, like I said, I do take the ink pad to the stamp when I've got a big stamp because I can see where I'm going then. It's just easier. So it's to do with the ink pad design. So it depends what ink pads that you've got. So, um, hi Jeannie. Thanks for joining us. Does that make sense, Sally? Um, so, uh, and for everyone else, just, just to kind of, uh, as a reminder, store ink pads flat. Don't ever store an ink pad on its end because all that's going to happen is the ink's just going to all soak to the bottom and then drip out and make a mess or on its side because it's going to do the same. So always store stamping up ink pads flat and the right way up. Everyone else's ink pads, store them upside down. <laughs> Sally says she gets it and it's helpful. Awesome. That is what I'm here for. That's the, the, honestly, that is the best bit about what I do. I love to share. So if you've got questions like that, always, always ask, because I love to share. Right. Okay. So.
So I don't think there are any more questions. So I will love you and leave you then. I will see you back here next Tuesday at two. Um, you'll always find creative inspiration over on my blog and on YouTube. So do, do go searching for me. I'm inspiring in Kim everywhere. So um, you'll be able to find me on YouTube and on the web and on Instagram and every place. And um, if you've got any questions, then send me an email. I'd love to hear from you. All right, so till next week, see you soon. Bye.